Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Go Fam. I'm here to talk to you guys about the poll that I had made over an hour or so ago about DeGeorge Syndrome, AKA 22Q11. So back when Mackenzie was born in 2011, she, after all the tests and everything in the hospital, they, you know, the cardiologist had came in and said that there was an irregular rhythm in her heartbeat. So we later discovered that she had what it was, was heart murmurs. So there was holes in her heart. As she was growing, we figured that the holes would automatically close without surgery. Well, the holes were not closing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my sunglasses on because it's just, it's just a little bright. So when she was home, the two three ounce bottles, she wouldn't even drink half of it. And it's, you guys know as mothers how much two and three ounces of the bottle would be. She would wake up more frequently into the night because she would be hungry since she wasn't finishing the previous bottles that we would be giving her. So one day, you know, I was at work and she wasn't feeling good at all. So Joe and I believe my father at the time, um, you know, took her to the uh, pediatricians. So while they were driving there, Joe had discovered, you know, that she was turning blue. She wasn't getting circulation. So once they get to the doctor's office, the doctor immediately sent them to a hospital. I was already notified at work. I was already heading, you know, towards where Joe and Mackenzie were. So that hospital, when I had got there, said that they couldn't do anything really for her. She would need more cardiac care. So the weather at that time was extremely, you know, bad. It was during January and she ended up, you know, going in the ambulance and I went with her to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, which was scary mind you, because it was already in Philly and we already had two kids prior, which was Ariana and Jacob. So once me and Mackenzie get settled at Children's Hospital, um, I called Joe on the phone, figured I'd give him, you know, an update of what's going on. She was fine. She was in, you know, the room. She was sleeping. She was fine. Next thing I know, I'm looking out the window for just a split second because my head was spinning with everything going on. And I'm sorry that if the video is coming in super bright, the sun decided to come out and join us. Um, so I was giving Joe an update on the phone. Next thing I know, I hear, I hear a code blue. But by the time I turn around, there was already, and when I say this, dirty heads in our room. So apparently she had stopped breathing the doctor performed CPR on her not once but if you know a few hours later we ended up losing her again the one time was 47 seconds the other one was about 50 something seconds that we had lost her um, but dr. Don shout out to you and dr. spray um, for making sure Mackenzie is doing uh, had a successful surgery We'll just say um, I didn't get that part of my story yet, but I owe them my life because Mackenzie wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for either one of them. Um, so we were in the hospital for maybe a good year and you know three months. It was a lot back and forth back to Philly and um, New Jersey where we live, and I would never want to go through anything like that. Again, I met a lot of great moms that was supportive. Um, we ended up going to Children's Hospital Specialized and that was in New Brunswick and then we were at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. But between the Specialized Hospital and you know the Philly Hospital, both of them were excellent with care. They knew what they were doing. And one day, me and Joe, they decided to do a genetic test on us. So the genetic test, again, um, at that time, I didn't know what it was. So they just took me and Joe's blood and then they did um, a few other things. But the moral of the story is 
is we got a genetic test done. And for what I understand, we as females are the carrier of this rare, rare syndrome called 22Q11 G. George. So he's not the carrier. We know he got tested of it. And I was so confused back then because I was like, well, why don't I have the problems that, you know, my own daughter has? And they're like, well, that's just because you're the carrier. You know, a lot of things were going through my head at that point. So I wasn't sure what questions to ask, what not to ask. I don't know. They eventually gave me a book. We read about it. So with the heart murmur involved as well, Mackenzie ended up needing heart surgery at two months old. So that was heartbreaking enough. I was a mess as any mother would be and freaking out. And obviously we had two other kids. So Joe would have to stay with Ariana and Jacob while I was, you know, in the hospital. So after surgery, they had the breathing tube in her. Um, she had the breathing tube in an extra week than what she was supposed to have. Now, remind you, before going and getting, you know, into any hospitals or before she got sick, I should say, um, she was sucking. She was, you know, at least drinking her bottle. She wasn't finishing it, but she was, you know, she, she knew how to suck the pacifier or the bottle. I gave away the pacifiers, took them away at a decent age because if not, you know, moms know. Um, so after the surgery... Uh, she ended up getting RSV, so that eventually went away, thank God, and since she had the breathing tube in for longer than what she really should have, she lost the, the function to suck. So when we would put a pacifier in her mouth, she would know, you know, to suck on the pacifier, but when it came to bottle feeding, because she had an NG tube in her nose, after the surgery so she can, you know, stay hydrated. She lost every which way to know how to drink from a bottle. So at that point, I wasn't frustrated with her. I was just frustrated at the doctors because at that time I didn't have a straight answer. And I was like, I don't get it. She, she, she could suck a pacifier with, with no trouble. But yet when we go to give her a bottle... She, she won't take it. And they explained a little bit about it that when, you know, her head's back a little bit and when they're drinking, there's the milk, the formula coming out behind the nipple. And with a pacifier, there's, there's nothing coming behind that nipple for her to, you know, aspirate or choke on. We had to keep an eye on her for the longest time about throwing up and then swallowing and aspiration. She was a higher risk of that. So eventually we were able to leave the hospital. Like I said, for we were there for a good year and, you know, I would say six months altogether. And it was a lot. It was a lot. And a lot of people don't know about that genetic testing. And with the syndrome, it really messes with her immune system. So if anybody has like the slightest little cold... And if they come near Mackenzie, she would get it 10 times worse to the point where she would be admitted in the hospital and, you know, have ammonia and all that. It would be bad, fevers and all. So when everybody was sick, either had to wear a mask or clearly stay away when it was difficult. I would have to say, honestly, around that time, Ariana Jacob really didn't get sick at all. So... I didn't really have to kind of shelter her, but obviously be careful of germs and everything else. So it was sanitized 24 seven, um, you know, more than usual as busy moms can do, you know, we're always running around and you know, who has time? I don't, I got four kids. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't. Um, but back, you know, when she was sick, we had to make sure everything was, you know, tip top before she came home as well. So the hospital, um, once we had left Philly, they had set us up with private duty nursing. It was a company called Preferred. Um, I met a lot of great people um, through that nursing company. I met a lot of lifetime friends. Uh, people, especially with Mackenzie, I mean, she was a baby at the time when these strangers were coming into our home at first for eight hours. And then they bumped it up for 16 hours, which we 
uh, switched around the hours a little bit instead of having a 7 a.m. because I can handle, you know, the morning. So they would come in at 8 a.m. and they wouldn't leave until about 12 a.m. at night. Sometimes I would let them leave earlier, you know, because if she's sleeping and if I'm there, she's fine. So, um, they set us up with the private duty nursings. Like I said, shout out to Eva and Rose. Honestly, she, she loves seeing you guys. She remembers you guys when, you know, she was just a baby. They have been on the case pretty much since day one. Um, there's a few nurses too, um, that would take care of her. But not, not many of them keep in touch anymore uh, to see how Mackenzie's doing. I felt like, you know, I get it. It's a job. It's the same thing like with my job. You know, instead of working with babies, I work with elderly. So, you know, but I still try to reach out and be like, hey, how you doing or how's she doing? Um, but she's doing very, very, very well. She used to have to go to the cardiologist um, every six months. Then it went to every year. She just had her last um, checkup. So she honestly doesn't have to go back until five more years, which is pretty good. She has not been hospitalized now for the past four years. And she's she's doing really good. She's eight years old. If you were to look at her, you would have never thought that, you know, she was our miracle baby. She has her scars and everything, which she pretty much knows all about. Um, she went from, like I said, the very beginning from having an NG tube to a, um, G, just a regular G tube in her stomach. And then as she got a little older, the doctor said she would most likely be okay with the, uh, Mickey button, which, um, you know, I'll probably go into another video when it comes to that, but D George syndrome is very, very rare. And it usually messes with the child's immune system. So if somebody's sick and if they're getting ammonia and something way worse, there's something wrong. And not a lot of doctors, you know, even think about, oh, okay, let's do the DeGeorge syndrome test. And although we were in Philly when we had that done, um, I didn't know what it was. I, I clearly see how rare it was because we never heard of it. All the other children are fine. They do not have the DeGeorge syndrome. She just recently got her Mickey button out, um, May of 2017. So she's, she's doing really well. Um, she's, she's feisty and she's a fighter, but I wouldn't change that for the world. It's a phase. She'll grow, outgrow it. We'll look back on it and laugh, but she <laughs> definitely knows how to push me and my husband's buttons. Um, Joe had to help out a friend, so he's not able to do this video with me. So it's all me. But um, I hope I answered your guys' questions about the DeGeorge and the 22K11. There's more topics that I would like to go over, but I had to do some motherly duties before the kids get home, and I'm running out of time. So I do have to do a few more things before they get home. But please, all expecting moms, all moms, if something doesn't seem right for your children, and if you did all the tests that you could, that you could think of, have the doctor test for D. George, 22Q11 syndrome. Have the doctor please check for that. If the baby doesn't finish the bottles or... Um, you know, like I said, it's it, getting sick more often. That was the big red flag for us before we even knew anything about DeGeorge. Is that how often she would be sick? I was like, I don't understand. You know, everything around her was clean. We would sanitize, wash our hands, everything. Um, her bedding, everything would be, you know, everything would be clean and sanitized. But then yet she was, <laughs> she was still getting sick. So... Um, she is our miracle baby. Like I said, we lost her two times. She had open heart surgery. Um, there was a moment there that she obviously wasn't allowed to eat by mouth. And we had, you know, quite, quite a few times that we were scared that, you know, we were going to lose her. Um, but like I said, um, Dr. Spray is the one who actually performed the open heart surgery on her. And Dr. Dan Don was the one who saved her the two times that she needed the CPR. So 
those two shout outs go out to you guys. So thank you very much. Um, if you guys have any personal questions or if you want to know more about it, feel free to hit me up on our Facebook page, The Let's Go Fam, or you can hit me up on Instagram, The Let's Go Fam. Um, remember, we are going to be giving away $200 to people who's been commenting and liking our pictures that we post on either the Facebook page or Instagram. So we're not going to let you know what platform we're going to go on. Just if you see a new picture or a new post, like it because that's how you're going to be able to get into the um, contest and win. So again, I thank you guys for spending time with me and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys continue to have a great Wednesday, and I'll talk to you guys soon.